Welcome, welcome, welcome. Say hello and let me know where you're from as you join the chat. Hello, hello. Hi, Vanessa. Does anyone else out there have hermit crabs? No, nobody. Nobody that wants to answer. have another group of shy people today. You can type in comments to me on the bottom of your screen. Hello. So if you want to participate in the conversation, you can just type messages like Vanessa is doing. Everybody else can see them and I can see them. We're just watching dinner time in my crab attack right now. Got one of my Caribbeans at the dish. And then behind, do you see that Viola? My Violas have always been so super shy. The slightest little thing. And they will not come out. They go into hiding. Tonight, they are eating the um, food from Germany that I dubbed Hermit Crab Crack. From Triops Germany. I ordered... Uh, 10 or 12 bags of it, some for prizes and some for my crab attack. So I just put that in a little bit ago. When I first came down here, there were probably five crabs already in it. But as soon as I sat down, of course, I scared them away. So I'm hoping they'll sort of make their way back while we're chatting. So the, the way our chat can be successful is if all of you post some comments or ask some questions. At least let me know that you're there. Just say hi, send a emoji or something through. So it says there's four people, but if I look under those four people, it just shows, Vanessa, that you're the only one that's still live. Like, so if you tap on the little person, do you get the same thing? Even though it says four, there's only one live viewer. I know Jenny said that she was going to join. Everybody seems so periscope shy. Thanks for sharing, Vanessa. Hopefully that'll help. My Viola is slowly coming out. I'm going to flip himself over. Or herself. I haven't been able to sex them. They're just too shy. They will not come out. Is someone else out there viewing? If so, just type hello into the chat so that we know that you're there. <laughs> nope, I think just because somebody came and went again. It's almost like whenever you come and go, Vanessa, that it counts it as a new person but doesn't drop you off again. It's kind of weird. Someday will be the most popular hermit crab chat on Periscope. Well, I guess technically we already are because nobody else is doing Periscope chats about hermit crabs or crabiscopes. That's what I'm going to call them now. Crabiscopes. I'm going to trademark that. <laughs> Oh, 
I see that you're back. I think every time you leave and come back, it counts you as a new person. Because if I tap on the person, it just says one live viewer, which is you. Hello, Kimbo. Welcome to the chat. Hi, do you have hermit crabs? Are you just checking in to see what this was all about? Oh, cool, you do. What kind do you have? Ah. Uh, I'm at home on Wi-Fi, so I don't think it's my connection because I'm not seeing any trouble connecting. I have the sniffles, you guys, and I apologize for that. I've been trying to blow my nose all day, but let's just... Class. I really want to get all four of them out together, because I kind of want to name them. <laughs> you don't know. Um, where do you live? That'll help identify what you have, maybe. And we also have a website, cenobitaspecies.com, and uh, that'll help you identify what type you have. Oh, you have that problem on Periscope. Did you get the update? Because the update seems to have fixed it for a bunch of people. Yay, you made it. Hi, Jenny. So we're just looking at my crab attack, waiting for people to join. Is Mike here too? Or was, is that Mike and not Jenny? Oh, whoops. Sorry, Mike. Wah, wah. <laughs> Holy cow. Baseball sized shell. That is a big guy. I think that my Indos are probably the biggest. And then, can you see the one back there? But they're not baseball size. And can you see behind the water dish? Somebody's burrowed underneath the water dish and pushed all the substrate up. Oh, no, I'm holding it. I'm holding it sideways. I got the Periscope update and it supports landscape again. <laughs> I know. I, I, I've had them for so long and I can't imagine... Like, this tank is a handful to move, but I can't imagine not having my hermit crabs. I just love them so much. And I just find them so entertaining. I love studying them. I love watching them. So here's my current count of who's in the tank. I have a 150-gallon tank. So I've got 30 Caribbean, 6 E's, 10 Ragosas, 10 Kvipes, 5 Indos, and 5 Violas. Now, good luck. Oh, that wasn't one of my Indos. That was the, the bigger Caribbean crab. Um, you wouldn't know there were that many crabs in this tank. Like, they're just out. They're either hiding or dug under. And then almost all of the Caribbeans are little bitty guys. So they're hard to see. Like, there's one back there on the cork bark in that little bitty tiny shell. Like that one's like dime size. I'll just show you my tank a little bit before I start asking some of my questions. That's the cocoa fiber um, flower pot liner that I found at the dollar store. And I use it now as like a shield over the shell bin. And I thought those would make some great prizes. And so I went back to the dollar store today to see if they still had any left because I heard they were on clearance. And the one store nearby was completely out. But I'm going to check some others and see if I can find them because those would be easy to mail to. So 
So back there at the bottom of the cork bark, that's one of my violas. And then you can see one of the Caribbeans is crawling there on my turtle shell. They've got popcorn in the tank too. There's a little bitty Caribbean coming out of the bamboo tunnel. So where is everybody from? Oh no. Well, thanks for coming by, Mike. Be safe. You know, you can um you can take just the you're in California. That's that's cool. I am in southern Illinois near Missouri. And Vanessa's in Brisbane, Australia. So I take the popcorn kernels. And Mike is from Kentucky. Okay, so he's not that far from me. I put the popcorn kernels in a paper bag. And then just fold it shut and toss that in the microwave. And it'll pop just in that paper bag like that. And there's a health food store that's not too far away. It's in the town I used to live in. And they sell by the ounce popcorn kernels so I can just go and buy like a few scoops and it'll last me a long time so I don't even bother with like an air popper I just throw it in the microwave in a paper bag and let it go my crabs love popcorn and that is kind of universally one of their favorite treats it seems like they will definitely come running for popcorn. How big is your setup, Kimbo? Oh, you have two 20 gallons. Do you have different species? I know you said you're not good at IDing them, but or are they all the same species? in both tanks. <laughs> Somebody's getting ready to come out of the tunnel. You feel dizzy. Do you want me to go back to portrait mode, Vanessa? Is that better? Are you on your iPad? Sorry, sorry, sorry. I didn't realize it was giving you guys grief. <laughs> you're on the iPhone. Okay. And you're on iPhone also. I wonder why the picture is not right for you guys. Maybe landscape mode isn't quite sorted out like they think it is. <laughs> sorry. Just tell me. Sorry. <laughs> I assumed that was better because nobody else was saying anything. So somebody is in... The tunnel. I just see antenna waving. I don't know if you guys can see the antenna. It looks like another one of my larger Caribbeans. Nobody's tried out the hemp net yet. They, which surprises me, because it's kind of like right there, and they can get onto it from that fake tree. So. I, I don't know why they won't go climbing on it. I thought they would love that thing. When I had the cork bark wall section, actually against the wall, they climbed on that all the time. I guess because I want them to do it. They're just refusing to do it. Yours have never liked nets, really. Huh. I've definitely had like fish net in here before and they climbed on it too. I don't know, maybe because it's new they're just just not used to it. Maybe it smells it smells funny to them or something. You have a net that you're <laughs> that you're gonna set up once you get your tank going again. Oh, 
maybe that that one's gonna get on it no I didn't soak it it's just all natural hemp that somebody made so I didn't really see any reason to do any soaking or anything but I don't know maybe that would make it smell different to them maybe they would like it better so I think the little guy so down here at the food dish the one in the the turbo shell on the left is a Caribbean. Can you see the one right behind it? He's also in a green turbo. That guy back there. That appears to be, without getting too close, a Rogosis. And then another Caribbean. There's another Caribbean in the turtle shell. They love that turtle shell so much. I got this dish today, too. Um... There's a local, I know, they, well, those guys are pretty small. They're like, that rugosis would probably just barely be bigger than a quarter sitting on it. Um, but there's a guy who apparently was like a local potter, and he dug up local clay and made all this pottery, and then like he just apparently left to go open a gallery in New York. So I bought some of his smaller dishes. So the dish that they're eating out of tonight is one of his dishes but um this one is also and I thought it was kind of cool because it's like a seashell but it should be able to like push down into the substrate but I didn't want to put the hermit crab crack in there because this has a crack in it and I didn't want the water and stuff to run out and make a mess and then this is another one that I bought just a bigger a bigger bowl that I'll also use in there to put food in I just, I don't know, I don't typically, for food, I don't typically um, buy too many of the reptile dishes. I just find other stuff that will work. I mean, I've picked up some dishes just from adoptions and stuff. But to actually go out and buy them, I don't really do it. Oh, speaking of that, I went to a yard sale today. And this lady had a critter keeper with a bunch of hermit crab stuff in it. And most of it was crap, stuff that you shouldn't be using. But there was a cute little, um, like a, a figure that has like the, it's supposed to be like a little oasis, like a little pool with the palm tree and stuff. So that was kind of cute. And I thought, well, if somebody has a small tank and small crabs, I do too. It was the city wide. So my girlfriend and I went to a whole bunch of them today. But I thought if you had a small tank and little crabs, that that little, decoration piece would be pretty cute so I asked the lady if she would sell it separately and she refused to do it okay we'll be here for a little while I guess she thought she was going to get her entire five dollars out of that like it was just like a pink a pink piece of choya some crappy store-bought food a bunch of shitty Sorry, crappy painted shells. And then this little piece of decoration or whatever. So I'm like, yeah, I don't need this other crap. I just wanted the one piece. This is what the hermit crab crack looks like. Dry. It's definitely got some fish flakes in it. But there's a bunch of other stuff in there, too. There's, like, pellets and stuff that almost looks like kibble. And then whatever this red powdered stuff is. I don't know. These crabs go mad for it, though. Oh, a big guy's finally going to come out. What do you put in your own dry mix? This little guy's eating his veggies. He's eating his spirulina. What a good little crabby.
I gotta be careful about putting my phone too close to the tank. It spooks them. <laughs> I also have dry foods that I bought from Crabotanicals, which are really good. I know I love those bamboo. I have two of them in here. Uh, Crabotanicals, Hermes Kitchen. I was thinking there was one more. Seaweed, brine shrimp, bloodworms, dry plankton, something. That sounds like a good mix. I have like the frozen blood worms, but my crabs have seemed like as long as I've had them. Krill. Yeah, they love krill, don't they? But my crabs don't seem to like the frozen blood worms at all. Like I've fed them to them multiple times and they just don't have anything to do with them. Vanessa, did you use the frozen or the dried? And yours don't like it either. I even got um, a salmon head one time. I think it was salmon. <laughs> Grind it up all together. Yeah, I think it was salmon. It was a big fish. Anyway, um, my sh friend Michelle works at a college and they have, they opened a culinary kitchen and they were serving fish, so she got the head for me, and I put it in the tank, and I thought that the crabs would go crazy over it. They didn't even t really, I feel like they ate the eyeball, and that was it. And my tank smelled so bad. So they've never had raw fish since then. They get krill and, like, the dried shrimp and stuff like that, but no more raw actual fish it was too stinky it was so so gross Kimbo how long have you had hermit crabs this stupid adhesive thing is driving me crazy but it's like the mother of all adhesives that thing has been on there for like eight years and I can't get it off. Ten years? So you've had them for a, quite some time. I think I'm at, I think I decided 12 years. So being in California, I bet you definitely have Caribbeans, but there's a good chance you also have Ecuadorians or E's. Which are seen to be to compress us. Those would be easily accessible on the west coast. Are there other foods that you find your hermit crabs don't like? Killed too many at first. I was doing everything they were telling me to do. That was a problem. Yeah, I think that's pretty much everyone's story. Everyone who stuck with hermit crabbing realized that they started out all wrong by emulating what they saw at the pet store or what they were told to do at the pet store and then yeah we start researching and then stumble into all these communities and realize that we were doing pretty much everything wrong and not because of any bad intentions or laziness just simply because we assume that the pet store knows how to take care of pets which is absolutely not true. And most of them don't listen to any kind of input from us or any other group. We've tried multiple times. I started out with wood shavings because of crazy crabs. Oh, wow. Yeah, I did the aquarium gravel. I had aquarium gravel. It's like, how the hell would they ever molt in that? Mine love avocado, apple skin, cucumber skin, fresh coconut sometimes, banana. Banana is another food that my crabs have never eaten over the years. None of them won't touch it. They're so busy on the cork bark. The big 
Caribbean is going up the back, and then a smaller one's coming down, and then there's an E right behind it. Yeah, even Petco, you know, and I've I've tried tweeting to Petco, like, you know, if a little underripe. I've tried like all different stages. I really have. Um, if Petco supposedly cares so much about animals, why do they flat out refuse to listen to reason and why do they keep buying the stupid painted shells? Yep, they just want the money. My crabs are usually, at least some of them, out and about during the day, but not at all like, like they are at night. Yep, they sell. Those stupid painted shells sell. They were having some sale this week, like, it was three crabs for $18.00. But the fine print said it excluded the small crabs. Most of my crab, oh, most of my little are rescued from people who decided they were too boring. <laughs> yeah, they bought them for their kids and their kids decided they were boring. <laughs> That's pretty common too. The small ones that I have, um, the 20 that I adopted, were from some lady who went to, I don't remember if it was Mexico or Puerto Rico, I don't know, someplace to the south, outside of the U.S., and she saw hermit crabs and decided that she was instantly in love with them, and she bought like 200 of them and had them shipped back to the U.S., and then like within a week or something ridiculous decided that she didn't want them. And she's in my area, so um, another guy who, a younger guy who's um, an adopter in the area saw her post, I think, on Craigslist and contacted her and two were bought in North Carolina vacation and driven back to California when I think, God, wow, wow. It's amazing they lived. So that guy... Um, told her he would he would take them and start adopting them out. So, yeah, my 20 little bitty guys came from some batshit crazy lady that bought, like, 200 hermit crabs. It's just, like, her very first time seeing them, experiencing them, no idea what it would take to care for them. And why would you buy 200 anyway? In wire cages, I bet. Oh, God. Like, how did she think she was going to house 200 hermit crabs? I would love to have talked to her. Yeah. Ridiculous, right? 200. I thought maybe she was going to sell them or something, or thought she was going to sell them, and then maybe she got here and realized that, whoops, they're already for sale all over in the malls <laughs> and pet stores. Do you see the guy climbing up the tree? I literally could sit here all night and just watch these guys. Right there on the thermometer is one of my kvipes. They're all really small also. Oh, uh, they come and go. We have several malls around here, and they come and go. So I have ten kvipes, but they're all small like that. There's one, two, three, four, five crabs just right here on top of this tree that I can see. I don't know who all's on the back side. <laughs> bad connection. Do you have a bad connection in bed? Maybe you have to get out of bed, Vanessa. Kimbo, if you've been keeping hermit crabs for 10 years, you probably don't have any questions. You're in the lounge room now. Well, it's 
It's like nine o'clock here or something. Are you saying yours don't even come out until even later? Somebody's eating popcorn. Like the Caribbeans especially um, are out, seems like, all during the day. Uh, a variety of foods to try. Well, you could try ordering that food, this hermit crab crack if you want, or enter one of our contests and then you could win some of it. Um, Etsy seems to be a good place. Ah, uh, when it's dark. So because I have my light on, your crabs wouldn't be out. My moon, I have, um, night lights too, but they're all on a timer, so these will go off. The Hermit Crab Crack is on the Triops Germany website. If you go to our website, which is crabstreetjournal.org, and look in the left-hand side under supplies. His link is there, and he's also on Facebook. If you want to... Oh, you're scared to try places you're not familiar with. Yeah, I purchased my crabs from him, my um, exotic species, and he posts videos of his crabs all the time, and he feeds this food to his crabs, and you can just watch him go crazy for it. And so... Um, that's why I started feeding it and I got some as prizes. And I also have food from Hermes Kitchen as prizes, which is really good. And they're on Etsy. Crabotanicals, she's been crabbing as long as I have been for sure. She used to go by the name Jedi Sena or Jedi Sena. And she lives in Colorado and she does all natural organic food. And I got some stuff from her for prizes also. And then I think there's people on eBay, but mm, I would be like you. Like if I didn't know who they were and they were into keeping crabs, I don't know that I would necessarily buy food from them. Um, I think the Crabbage Patch sells food. Um, the Alaska Hermit sells food. I think all of these guys are linked from our website under, I think it's under supplies is the link category that they're in. We try to link to as many resources that we can just to make it easy for you to find stuff and, and sites that we recommend that are people we know or trust. Oh, I wish you could see there's like an antenna war going on back here behind the net. They're so funny. You should come by the site and join one of our contests too. We have the Crabitat of the Month and that's just post pictures of your tank and the members all vote on their favorite setup which doesn't necessarily have to be the biggest or the fanciest. Sometimes it's the most creative. Sometimes it's just like the most impressive tank done on a budget. Lots of DIY stuff. And then we have the calendar crab contest, which is like a monthly beauty pageant for the hermit crabs. And we pick a winner each month. Some months have a theme, but the end goal is that all of the winners become calendars or months on the calendar. I create a calendar on Cafe Press at the end of the year, and each of the monthly winners is featured on their winning month. <laughs> it's a mess. Like, they have a, a great knack for just totally destroying your tank, right? And then uh, to decide who gets to be on the cover of the calendar, we do kind of a end-of-the-run vote-off. So all of the monthly winners go up in a contest just against each other in a poll to see who was the favorite out of the entire year and whoever has the most votes gets to be on the cover of the calendar and then that person gets a free copy of the calendar. And then the other contest that we have open right now is just our annual contest which is um, 
the Crabble Lantern contest, which is just carve a pumpkin in some sort of hermit crab related theme and upload the pictures. A couple years ago, we had a guy who did like an actual sculpture of a hermit crab from like some small decorative kind of pumpkins. It was so cool. And then there were, I don't know if that was the same guy. If he, he carved like three different gourds and pieced together, they like made up the hermit crab. It was pretty, pretty cool. I can't even do the most basic of jack-o'-lantern just like with the triangle eyes and stuff. It's just, it's too much work. Some guys going in for a drink, cruising around the freshwater pool. They drug a piece of popcorn over there, too. From the look of that pile of sand, I'm guessing one of the endos is back there fixing to molt underneath that dish. I don't know why they always go under the water dish. Like they clearly have plenty of space. I mean, the substrate's pretty deep out to about right there, and then it sort of starts tapering off to about, I don't know, five inches deep. So they could come a little bit away from the water dishes. So you just do the same thing. Like, it's like they know. I don't even, I don't even know how they have such a sense. Because even when there was barely any substrate underneath them, I used to have the tank set up differently. It used to be, um where the water dishes were in the low spot. But the E's would still try to burrow underneath the dishes. And, like, there's no, not even any room under there for them. And they would still try to get underneath there. So, Vanessa, I tried water bubblers when I had my tank at the other house. And the crabs kept climbing up the airline. Yeah, maybe it does help with the humidity down there. It could be. But so, yeah, like, and if you move the pump into the tank, then they can climb the power cord. So that was always a concern. And then the stupid bubbler stone seems like it would get plugged up all the time and I would have to keep changing it. So I felt like it was way more maintenance than I was willing to deal with to have the bubbles and the circulation. So I just took it out. And I even had this really cool setup that was like an aquarium piece, but it was, um, it was probably like 18 inches wide and it had like a, I, maybe it wasn't supposed to be, I don't even remember now. I'm sure it was an aquarium piece. Anyway, it had like a water wheel on it. And it also had like an area that should have been a pond. And it had bubblers underneath there. And the crabs really liked it because the water was always in motion. But it was such a pain in the rear to clean. And then they would climb. There was a place where they could climb and kind of get stuck. And they could get underneath it. So I finally just gave up on that and took it out too. But yeah, I mean... I just didn't want them climbing the airline and escaping. And they're such escape artists. So how many do we have out now? I can see two, three, four, five. Oh, one back there, six, seven, eight. Nine. There has to be somebody else around here. Hmm. I can only see nine right now. I do see back there. Oh, I'm sure keeping the water cycled probably does help with breeding and creating a more natural habitat no not that i'm aware of i've never noticed any of them with eggs
But yeah, there's part of a dried flower back there, I guess, from last weekend when I put all the flowers in. So they pretty much ate every bit of flowers that I put in here. There's just one blossom left back there. They must not have liked whatever that was. I would love to be able to just even get pictures. You know, I mean, there's lots of really good pictures of gravid females out there now. So that's pretty cool. But it's always nice to have your own pictures. Um, you know, I've asked and gotten permission to repost certain pictures. But it's always more fun to have your own and to be able to experience it. The Land Hermit Crab Facebook page. No, I'm not. I'm on the HCA talk page and then we have the Land Herbert Crab Owners Society group that's like a chat group and then our own web page but no I have to be careful but because there's always been a fair amount of drama <laughs> between some of the hermit crab communities and I just don't really want to be involved in that I think um, somebody's already annoyed that that I'm on the HCA talk page. Pics of my big guy on there. I'm thinking on that other one too, but no pics. Gotcha. Um, anyway, somebody I think on the HCA page is annoyed that I'm on there and answering questions, but I'm not... I'm just answering questions to be helpful. I'm not plugging our site. I never mention our site. But I don't think they like me being on there. And years and years and years ago, when I first got Hermit Crabs, the HCA was the first website I found. And not long after being there, they wanted to migrate to new software. So myself and another IT person did the entire move, moved the entire site, the forums, everything to new software, hand created a new theme, which they were just using up until recently still, like 10 years later. And then um, Krista, who was the website owner at the time, decided that we were trying to take over, even though she volunteered, like, came and approached us to do this work um she basically used us let us do all the work and then banned us from her website and i've been banned from the hca ever since so i just kind of lay low around them in general because i don't want them thinking that i'm trying to stir up any kind of drama because i'm really not because i really don't care yeah it was it was nice like she basically got us to do all the work for free and then locked us out <laughs> so um, then I found CSJ and Vanessa, and Vanessa was running the Crab Street Journal at that time, and so I joined the site, and um, at some point she, she was kind of overwhelmed with the site and some other stuff and asked me if I would take over, and so CSJ became mine, and I kind of took ownership of, of all of the sites that went with it and kept it online. Even during slow times, I kept it online. I knew it was really important that the information stay out there and be kept current and available to everyone, regardless of whether or not people were posting in our forums. So I continued to maintain the site and update it. And then Vanessa came back. Oh, thank you. I love CSJ too, and it wouldn't exist if it weren't for Vanessa. And I'm so thrilled that she came back and she's she's helping get the site updated. She brought the contest back. She's been doing all kinds of work for the site and it's so much fun having her back since it was her baby to begin with. You know, it wouldn't be there if it weren't for her. So she's a pretty key player in the hermit crab world in my eyes. And pretty soon she's going to have crabbies again. <laughs> And I'll be jealous because she'll have Aussie Krabbies and we can't get those. <laughs> I'm pretty proud of the way the site looks right now. We've put a lot of work into it. And I worked really hard. I'm so appreciative I kept it going all this time. 
it was hard at times and I, I it's a lot for one person to do but the information is so valuable and I didn't want it to only be on our forums because forums are very fickle and the software is very fickle oh I don't know about that but thank you thank you uh, so I worked on getting the information off the forums and into actual articles and documents that I could back up a little bit more easily and transition to different software because the the free CMS software that's out there is not not great not really any of it and it's not well supported and so we had been on Nuke Evo, and then it stopped getting updated and supported, so I moved to Zoops, and then it stopped getting updated and supported, and so now I'm finally, we're on a WordPress with BuddyPress install that I really like, and because it's WordPress, I know that it's going to stay maintained. So hopefully we won't have to do a major software transition anytime soon. And now that I see that um, HCA and the other LHC have been, I don't know how much time and energy you put into it. Well, you know because you've done it too. Like you were there in the trenches all by yourself for a long time too, building the amazing beginning of CSJ. But seeing that th both of those forums have been down now for weeks because they're trying to migrate the software is really kind of reinforced my belief that I did the right thing in moving all of our important information into articles because forums are fun and it's great to have the interaction but that's what they're struggling with right now it seems like and I don't know if it's because they have so much valuable valuable information in the forums that they don't want to lose it but it's just unfortunate that their site has been down for so many weeks while they're trying to get all this stuff merged together It's so much easier just to back up articles than forum structure and posts and replies and categories and all that jazz. My first name is Stacy. What's your first name? I'm guessing it's not Kimbo. Oh, I know. I remember your coding comas, Vanessa. <laughs> you still work until the wee hours of the night. Hi, so it's just Kim. Okay. Is your last name Bo? <laughs> and are you 20? Probably not 20 because then that means you would have gotten hermit crabs at age 10. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> just no but hell no <laughs> oh you're 51 oh I love it so so how did you even what brought you to hermit crabs in the first place like did you always want them was it just a random thing Your stepdaughter wanted a pet in her room. <laughs> so kids are the root of it all every time. They kept dying and you took over. There's so much research out there, too. Yeah, like, once you're hooked, you're just hooked, right? Like, either you get it or you don't. And people at work will, like, accidentally say something hermit crab related to me, and I can't, like, not just start gushing about them. And I was at Starbucks one day, several months ago, and it was when that... Um, that video from BBC One with the hermit crab chain reaction where they were changing shells where that was like really popular and had gone viral. And the baristas at Starbucks were talking about that video. And 
I had to bite my tongue because I just wanted to interrupt them and be like, oh my god, hermit crabs are amazing and you should come to my site and see why they're so amazing. <laughs> they would have been like, you are batshit crazy and you need to get out of here right now. <laughs> we do have a research section on the website too. Love being my big guy to school. The kids have seen all the little ones in the pet store. Yeah, I mean, they are impressive when they get to jumbo size. <laughs> they freak out. <laughs> yeah, I've had people come down and look at, at the tank and were like, oh my God, they're so scary. And I'm like, no, they are so cute. Look at their eyes. <laughs> so I've tried to legitimately obtain as many full research documents as I can um, because I don't have school access. I'm limited. Your neighbor's terrified of him. Oh my gosh, well, I hope he never escapes. And you're like, is out on the lawn when your neighbor comes outside. So I've uploaded as many of them as I can that um, I find interesting. And like, I sat and went through all of them. I read all of them, highlighted them, and then I got them all uploaded. The amount of time I've spent reading about hermit crabs is just ridiculous. And even though I don't always understand all what they're saying in the papers, I don't even care. I continue to read them. That's that same rugosis in that... No, I don't teach. I'm not, I'm not in uh, education at all. That's the same guy that was out eating a, a little bit ago. I wish I wasn't in education just so I could get access to the research articles for, excuse me, for free. Oh, I said I don't have any kind of school access. Because if you, most of the websites that have research articles, if you're a student or I think a professor, if you're, in, like, have an EDU address or if your school happens to have an affiliation with them you can get access to all the research documents you want for free otherwise the access is like 40 bucks per article for most of them and that would have been like a couple thousand dollars oh you do i had um that would be great because i have a few more that i want um i have one that i thought michelle was gonna get for me but I don't know if she forgot. She was going to ask the librarian to get it. Maybe. Try. I don't know if you have to just be a college student or if any teachers can get access. But like JSTOR is one of them. J-S-T-O-R. Um, I'm trying to think what the other one might be. So, okay. I think I have a document with all the titles in it. That's one of the kavipes right there. As a teacher, if you can't get access, you might be able to get your school to contact them and set something up so that you can get access through the school so that like all the teachers would have access kind of thing. Like I, I don't know that you, as a school, you have to pay for the access, but I couldn't guarantee that. Because I've never really looked into it. I don't know if it's too dark in here. I'll try turning the camera around so you guys can see me. Oh, look, I have a crazy red face <laughs> from the moon glow lamps. Hi. Ah, oh, that's how you got access. And my hair is really this red. I was trying to dye my hair purple, and it turned out burgundy. It's okay. I'm getting used to it. So this is me. Just wanted to say hi. Do, do contact the journal article author often they have thank you yeah um like i know those are my overhead lights um either you 
and or Sue, you know, was in contact with Peter Greenaway and got information from him. I know Sue did because that's what she based her PPS articles on. The articles to reduce the post-purchase stress um, was after she had talked to uh, Peter Greenaway and discussed some stuff with him. I wish we could have somebody like him or Renee Brody just sort of like at our beck and call that we could just ask questions like, what is this? Why is this happening? How do we make this better? You know, that kind of thing. We would pretty quickly exhaust them, I think. I do find it interesting that um, Renee Brody was not able to successfully rear hermit crabs like they all hatched and all that but the ones that made it to land worked on determining the different species I have some comments about species identification but um, even the ones that made it to land ended up dying a few days later like none of them survived even once they took a shell so the this the species chart thing um i was trying to decide if i wanted to include the um rubensens and the pseudorugosus like I, some of the stuff i've read said they're a documented species and so i have no real pictures of them like I think there's one Rubensen's picture I was able to find on Flickr and a couple that are supposed to be pseudorugosis. And so I emailed Tony and asked him if he had photos. And he's still of the belief that they may not be their own species. They may be, you know, being confused for something else. So I wish there was somebody that, that could sort of verify that for me one way or the other whether or not Rubensens is a true species. Australian crab are bred successfully. That is so cool. And whether or not Pseudorugosis is a true species. Now, uh, the guy that I bought, uh, Christian Bachenauer, that I bought my crabs from, is trying to get Pseudorugosis. If you have hermit crab sperm. Uh -huh. How does one collect hermit crab sperm is the question. And that guy's digging, digging, digging. Um, so he's supposed to be getting what is pseudorugosis, but I wouldn't know to compare them side by side by looking at them. Like, I'm not capable of, of determining whether or not they're truly a different species just based on keeping them as pets. Um, he's also trying to get scavola, which I think would be pretty cool. So I'm torn as to whether or not I should put in the effort of including them in the species chart. Because even if I... Oh, I thought I heard someone croaking. I'm sorry. Even if I included them, the amount of information about them is so limited and I don't have any sort of physical description to go by like I do with the other species. So... I feel like I should stick to the commonly accepted species and commonly known species. And now I'm not even sure. I need to go back and contact the artist because he never told me yes or no whether he thought he could do this. That would be great, especially if you get any more information for us. <laughs> I think the species chart is a great idea, though. Let 
Well, it never occurred to me to make a wall chart. And I don't know why. It just not once, not ever crossed my mind. But now that Pam brought it up, I'm totally sold on the idea. Like, uh, I wanted to do one years ago, but we didn't have good enough photos at the time. Yeah, see, and, and even now, while I can get access to some quality photos from Flickr, most of them, you know, are okay giving permission to use on the website, but using their photos for something that I'm going to print and sell, they're never going to agree to. And so I can't get photos of that quality and I can't even get access to some of the species. So my only way of handling this is to get an artist to do illustrations based on all the photos that would be all original. So I'm glad we put together, hello, was it who, who felt? <laughs> I miss that. Marnell Rodriguez, welcome to Crab Chat. Hello, hello. Do you have hermit crabs? <laughs> you do? What what species do you have and how many? 16. Very cool. So are you a hermit crab addict then, like the rest of us? Only five on the surface. I know how you feel. 55 gallon tank. Very cool. Very cool. I have a 150 gallon tank and I have about 60 crabs, most of them are small, but there's like maybe 10 of them above ground that I can find. I think the rest of them are probably hiding, but we counted a little bit ago and there's only a few above ground. Yeah, that's a lot, but most of them are very small, like these guys down here. I do have a couple good sized Caribbeans, like that guy right there, and then five decent sized, whoops, fell down. Crabby fall down, <laughs> uh, like five good sized Indos, but do you see them anywhere? Nope. Oh, you're in Vancouver. Very cool. I got my exotics from uh, Triops Germany. I ordered them in the spring and he shipped them to me. The, only, the very first shipment I had a problem with, but it wasn't his fault. It was because U.S. Customs held my order yeah it's expensive but but he's getting better shipping he, they held my crabs for 15 days in customs and of the original order like six of them died and then the rest have been fine um i got kvipes and rugosis and then the next shipment i got the customs people opened them completely ransacked the package and one of the in, one of the Indos was out of its shell, but went right back in its shell, and all of them survived. So because of that kind of bullshit with the U.S. Customs, he had to get a customs broker, and so it costs a little bit more. But they don't. He won't have to deal with customs, and our packages won't get held up in customs anymore. They should just come right through. So. It's actually for the better. And his prices on the crabs themselves aren't that bad. It's just, yeah, that that shipping is a kicker. But if you can find somebody to split the shipping with you, you guys could, like, split an order and, and both get some crabs. Three jumbos, one medium. And did you start out with the large tank right off the bat, or did you have a small tank and you quickly upgraded, like most of us do? That's what happened to me, too. I, um, 15 gallon to start. <laughs> so you started off a little bit bigger than most of us do. 
yeah, when I was in elementary school, which was like a million years ago, we had um, a school carnival every fall in the school gymnasium, and they had all the different booths where you could play like carnival games and win prizes, and one of the prizes was a live hermit crab. And I always wanted one, and my mom refused to let me even play the game to try to win one. She just said there was no way I couldn't have one, which was probably the best thing to do because I clearly would have killed it. Like, there's no way. I lived in Wyoming. We had no access to any kind of information, and there sure was no internet back then, so I would have had to gone to the library and found a book about them, and, you know, it, it would never have survived. I wouldn't have been able to get all the stuff that they needed and maintain the tank. So then I decided it's been like 12, 12 or 13 years now I've had hermit crabs. Um, I went to the mall one day and there were hermit crabs at the pet store. And I decided it was time to get my hermit crab. So I bought one and I set up a 10 gallon tank just like the tank at the mall with terrible aquarium gravel and then I decided oh I wanted to get another one so I went back and picked up another one and it died almost right away so then I started researching to find out why it died and I quickly realized I had the entire wrong setup and now here I am 12 years later with this which I've had this for quite a while and multiple hermit crab websites <laughs> it is huge it is six feet long and i am only five feet tall so i could literally climb in this tank and lay down and i got this for such a steal yes the food that i got that i'm feeding tonight is from triops and this stuff is like hermit crab crack it, they normally go crazy for it. When I first came down here, there were about five crabs in that dish. Um, I've seen them when the endos are above ground, they clamor over that shell and kick punch each other away from the dish. It's insanity. Um, I have 10 or 12 bags of it that will be prizes for our contest. So if you order or enter one of our contests, you can win a bag of it. And they're pretty good sized bags. Like my crabs. Here's what a bag looks like. My crabs I don't think will finish this tonight. Uh, the first time I fed it to them. That's so nerve wracking when the big guys molt isn't it? Um, the first time I, yeah, it does have fish flakes in it for sure, but there's kibble and other stuff in there. And the first time I fed it to them, I fed them a whole bag and they ate every bit of it overnight. When I got up in the morning, there was literally no trace of it left. It was ridiculous. And they eat really well. Like, it's not like they're starved. So, um, I lost my train of thought. Yeah, they can eat ordinary fish flakes. Mm -hmm. um, I even have fed beta food to mine because I had a beta for a while. And after the beta died, I still had tons of beta food. So I would just, um, I actually would take it and just sprinkle it all throughout the tank. I didn't even put that in a dish. Like a lot of the dry food, I just spread all over throughout the tank so they can kind of scavenge for it. And it gives them something to do. So yeah, they can eat beta food also. Are you a member on our website or did you just happen to find our our periscope by accident? Yeah, anything with ethoxyquin. Natural is always better. Ah, uh, you're in the Facebook group. Okay. So you've probably seen all the posts about the different contests we have. You do have to be an actual member on our website to enter the contests and to be able to vote in the contests. But we give away cool prizes, all free, 
Hi, Kim. Welcome back. You don't even have to pay, yeah, on CSJ. Um, you don't have to pay shipping or anything like that to get your prizes like some people do. As long as you're over 18. If you're not over 18, then we have to get permission from your parents for me to mail something to your house. Really? Really? About the prizes? Yeah. Yep. Um, Vanessa, you're 28. Okay, so it's safe for me to mail you stuff. <laughs> Vanessa just recently did a um, animation of all the prizes we have right now, which I made more work for her and I added more prizes to the selection today. But if you go on the website to the contest, the main contest page, you can see the stuff that we have up. But we have um, a bunch of different foods. So I have the hermit crab crack. He really has to call it that because that's what I call it, as if that's actually the name of it. Um, I have food from Crabotanicals. Cool, cool, cool. The contests all end at the end of the month, so you have a little bit of time. Um, Hermes Kitchen I have food from that will be in the prize packs. I offer shells in the prize packs. I have some of these bamboo tunnels that you can win. Um, I have a cork round, not quite as big as the one I have that's back here that one of my Caribbeans is climbing out of the top of. It's actually about half the size of that, height-wise. Uh, my substrate is a mix of eco-earth and play sand. So you, if you mix them together, the eco-earth helps keep the sand damp and helps it uh, stay moist so that it packs better. So, yeah. Yep, Milo's, the guy who created Milo, who was our uh, mascot, Daniel Sean K. he wrote a book called Never Underestimate a Hermit Crab. We have two copies of that to give away. Um, I got some little ramkin dishes today that would, would be really great um, crocs to serve food in. I got a net, a small little, like, a ladder like this. What else is in there? Vanessa, help me. I'm drawing a blank. Is that everything? We had a couple thermometers. One was just the kind you stick on the tank, and one is, like, an actual, like, real thermometer, like mine. Just a little short one. <laughs> you think so? Like, I can't even remember. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I wanted to get some more of these. These are uh, cocoa fiber, but they're meant to be the liner of a flower pot. But they're just cocoa fiber, just like the other cocoa fiber mats you buy. So I wanted to get some more of those as prizes, but I went to one of the stores and they were gone. <laughs> you knew. You knew what? Oh, there, yeah, there is another Periscope showing the prizes. That's true. I did that earlier today to try to help people find us on Periscope. Oh, the cocoa fiber from a pot, yeah. I have that hiding, kind of hiding their shell bin. That's what's underneath there is all their their empty shells, and it kind of gives them like a little bit of privacy so they can change shells without the cat seeing them and my cat loves to watch the hermit crabs and she will come sit right up against the glass and watch them. I think it probably freaks them out a little bit if they're wanting to change shells that she's like all up in their business. No, I don't mist my tank. Um, relying on a mister is like if it's, um, if it's a mister that's like on a timer and it's misting on a regular basis, that's probably okay for maintaining your humidity, but just like randomly misting the tank will not maintain the humidity consistently like it needs to be. So if you, I have lids, see I have plexiglass lids to hold the moisture in and I keep the substrate damp enough that it keeps the moisture, the humidity level up. I really need to get my hygrometer back in here, but I've kind of gotten to the point where I can sort of tell when I put my hand in, in the tank how humid it is. 
Um, and every time I put a hygrometer up, they tear it down and destroy it. I don't know why, what they have against hygrometers. I've been through, I don't know how many of them. And I had one that sat in the, in the substrate and then, then it just quit working. I think it got too wet. So, uh, I have moss. You can't really see it. But there's moss mixed into the substrate also. Like there's some dried moss right there. But um, I need to put another big batch of moss in here. And moss really helps keep the humidity up. And then as the moss kind of turns brown, I just sort of churn it kind of into the substrate as well. And it just helps keep it damp. <laughs> Can you see that little Caribbean back there just sipping the water? Dipping his pincher in, getting a little drinky poo. Like, oh, it's so good. The water's so fresh. <laughs> of course, they got to go to the fresh water, which is further back. They can't come up here to the salt water dish so we can see them really well. And the salt water dish looks terrible because there's algae growing in it. But I don't scrape the algae out of it because I know it's not harmful and I think they probably eat it. So I just rinse the bowl out and put fresh in and leave the algae in there. So that's why it's green like that. There's a little bit of algae in the fresh water, but for some reason it grows better in the salt water. <laughs> Marnell, do you have any other questions about keeping hermit crabs? Oh, goodness sakes, that was loud. Where did everybody go? Ah, uh, how long have I had this six foot tank? Hmm quite some time. So I started out with the 10 gallon and then I got a 40 gallon breeder um, used and I got that for like $30. And then I think when I moved into my own house, because I was still living with my sister when I had the 40 gallon, um, not long after I moved into my own house. So I think in 2005, I got this tank, so I've had this tank 10 years. I found this in the newspaper. It was a reptile tank. And I paid like 60 bucks for it. So it was dirt cheap. The next time I empty it, I'm going to have to re-silicone the bottom of it because the silicone is just kind of rotting over time underneath the substrate. It's just coming loose. It doesn't stick anymore. Yeah, like that's crazy cheap. I don't, like I saw people this week like asking about when is the next dollar per gallon sale? Like why does anybody buy brand new tanks? Every time I go yard sailing, there are 10 and 20 gallon aquariums. Sometimes people put them on the curb for free. You can just take them. They're in the newspaper all the time. They're on Craigslist all the time. You can get a used tank so, so cheap. The shells are underneath that. Do you want to see? Let me unplug my... Well, maybe I better not. I have my battery pack plugged in because last time we did this, my battery got really low and then the periscope didn't save which was kind of a bummer. Oh, somebody's in there. <laughs> Did you hear that? Like, hello, I'm naked! <laughs> One of the E's is back there. So those are the shells that are currently in the tank. Just for spares. Somebody's in the bushes, too. Somebody's up there in the bushes. And then my 
backlog or my storage of additional shells are right there. That bin. Oh, yeah, you're going to need a heat mat or better yet, get some lights. So I have three bins right there of shells that are extra shells also. Um, I'm not, like, I know that it's pretty common to use the heat mats, but I found it was way harder to heat my tank with a heat mat. You can't have the substrate very deep over a heat mat, so... <laughs> no, it is not a heat mat, unfortunately. That's a good idea, though. But um, if you have a big crab, they need at least 12 inches of substrate to molt in. There's no way a heat mat's going to heat through that. So you would have to put the heat mat someplace else. And in my tank, I would need like three of them. And then they come unstuck. With this much substrate in this tank, how in the hell am I supposed to get this tank up to tell if the heat mat is still stuck to the bottom? So once I went to a bigger tank, I moved completely away from the heat mat heat mats and went to these overhead lights. So these are combo light hoods, and you can see I have one day bulb and one night bulb in this one. And this one has a day bulb, ooh, a burnt out day bulb, and a night bulb. And these are on timers, so before too long, the timers will switch off the day bulbs and it'll just be the moon glow. And that's how I keep my tank warm. And they do a great job of it. If you look directly underneath this set of lights, the temperature right there on the substrate is 80. And that's directly underneath that light. So that gives me ranges of temperature. So um, further away from the light, of course, it's going to be a little cooler. But I'll tell you what, the favorite place to hang out on top of that log directly underneath the heat light. See the big guy back there? In the morning, there will be like six crabs up on top of that thing. So they love being under that. They definitely are looking for the warmth from those lights. So my tank is definitely not too warm. 80 is a good temperature. But like I said, I have temperature ranges, so there's cooler areas in the tank if they want to go to them. So yeah, just not a, I just don't find the heat mats to be very functional for me. These light hoods weren't that expensive. And um, the bulbs, if you go to the pet store to buy them, are way overpriced. They're almost $9 US. But I can order them online from like Dr. Foster's and Smith or another website when they're on sale for like, Two ninety nine or three ninety nine a bulb, and I'll just order like ten of each and just keep them stockpiled so I can change them out. And they do sales all the time and free shipping all the time, so it's way cheaper to order online. You can also get like a clamp light, but if you do a clamp light, you need to have um, a heat resistant lid if it's glass, so that the glass doesn't shatter with the heat shining down through it. Um, you don't really want to set it directly on there, but with a clamp light you almost have to. Or you have to leave an opening for it to shine through, so and then that's going to let your humidity out. And I just have... I don't think I've ever shown anybody this. Um, my lamps are suspended on chains, and then some there's chains and string, because we had to lengthen them at one point. But they're just suspended from the rafters in the basement. And we have these giant... Um, I'm going to try to get one here without falling over. And I apologize for like being all over with the camera. But we have these, these giant clips. Oh, I can't even squeeze it. Can't. It's too hard. I'm not manly enough. Anyway... Those are clipped on to the beams or the beam up there. And that's what's holding the lights up. So I didn't have to put I didn't have to put any nails or anything up there. And there's holes in the clamps. So you can just see right there. 
you can just feed the string through it and suspend it that way. So if I wasn't getting enough heat, I could actually add more chain or string and drop my lamps down a little bit lower. But this has been um, a really good height right now. And then the back of the tank, I don't, I don't know what this stuff, I know that it's ductwork stuff, but it's not the metal. It's like cardboard that's silver on both sides. So I think that it's heat reflective or like it's heat retaining. So, cause they use it, they use it like up there around the ductwork to help insulate. And when they redid this, they left a bunch of it behind. And what do you know, it was perfectly long enough to go on the back of my tank. So it runs the full length and even just beyond. So I think that that helps hold in some of the temperature too. And so this winter I'll be able to tell for sure because last winter